Hi everybody, Dan Ullman kicking off a pick four at Santa Anita on opening day Saturday. Graded stakes action in race number eight, the grade three Robert J. Frankel. Phillies and mares going nine furlongs on the turf. Before we get started, I won't mind the store. I'm going to give it all away. DRF.com. Take 25% off the entire DRF shop. It's an easy New Year's resolution to keep. Use the code DRF2020. Here's the field for the Robert J. Frankel stakes. We've got a field of eight. Mirth, five to two on the morning line. Mirth deserves to be the favorite. She's got the figs. She's a grade one stakes winner. The question for Mirth is twofold. A, is she better at slightly longer distances? B, does her speed play better at slightly longer distances, especially in a race with other speeds? Mirth has sort of turned the corner ever since Phil D'Amato and Mike Smith just let her go on the lead and just they don't bother her. They let her freewheel it out there up on the front end and she can take them a long way if allowed to be let go. Timeform U.S. Pace Projector, not too certain about this scenario. They don't think Mirth's going to make the lead. They don't think Mirth's going to sit second. They think Mirth's going to sit third. And I'm not sure Mirth is as good sitting third, and she has won from off the pace in the past, as she is on the lead. And I don't think Mirth's going to sit third. I think Mike Smith's on a mission to go to the front in here. I think Phil D'Amato's using this race perhaps as a stepping stone to some of the longer races down the road. I think he feels she's better at these longer distances. I think she's caught a good addition of the Frankel with which to make hay considering her good form. But if you believe this pace projector and you think this fast pace and the fact that she's not going to make the lead works against her, all of a sudden some of these other horses look very, very appetizing. We'll start with the number one Tiny Tina going out for Phil D'Amato. Tiny Tina is a horse that I thought had some ability. She ran going a mile and an eighth on May the 27th in an optional claiming race. It was a very fast edition of that race. She looked good beating Mirth that day from off of it. And then she went to the sidelines. And she came back in a race at Kentucky Downs, sprinting, European configuration, long layoff, short distance, didn't fire. Give her an excuse for it. Swing time stakes two back. She ran to a real sharp horse named Toinette. In and among horses on the far turn. Eased out in the lane. No pop. I thought it was a stepping stone. Slightly better. Still not 100% from a fitness standpoint. I liked her chances last time out in the red carpet. She didn't fire. Maybe the mile and three-eighths was just too far. And now from a fitness standpoint, we see a big bullet workout over the training track leading up to this race. Maybe Tiny Tina. I'm off her. I liked her last time in the red car. The fact I'm off her just propels her to the winner's circle. But maybe now she's ready to go. Fourth start back, more appropriate distance, nice inside post, fast pace scenario. Could be coming from last as time form U.S. believes. It all could be coming together for Tiny Tina. And I don't think she should be completely ignored. And I also think it's worth noting. Flavian Pratt picks up the mount. Last two wins, Flavian Pratt was the rider. Excellent Sunset is next for Richard Baltus. Excellent Sunset is a maddening sort of horse. She's run 15 times. She has eight second place finishes. She has been beaten as the favorite in three out of her last four races while basically dropping photos each and every time. Richard Baltus is getting her for the first time and Baltus is taking the blinkers off. And as we see from a formulator fact that we have, this is a good move for Baltus. Past four years, in races for horses age three and up, on the turf, Baltus takes the blinkers off, they win 30%. $3.45 ROI. This horse has figures and races. She was second in this race last year behind Fahan Mura, who is in very good form. I wish that she liked to win more often, but she is going to get a setup in this race under Joel Rosario. I think she's got the ability, and if this pace melts down, she might very well be the best closer in the field. Don't blame Judy as another horse that looks like she's coming into good form. She comes out of an optional claiming race that featured Excellent Sunset, finishing second, and Harmless, who won. Those two horses were up close to a middling pace. Don't blame Judy was at the back of the pack. She swung five wide turning into the stretch, and she's grinding late to only get beat ahead. Something tells me she's in really good form right now. Now, she's going to have to stretch out slightly in distance. That's a question mark. But this pace scenario, last time... This is a 180 degree difference. I think she's going to run well in here. Don't blame Judy. And if not a winner, I think a minor award is very possible. Streak of Luck is next. They tried her on synthetic last time out. She didn't have to like that. She didn't run very well. The race prior to that in the Goldakova, she went right to the front. She set the pace. She tired against Toinette. She's another horse that looks like she's working her way back into shape. 
A mile and an eighth, I don't think is terrible for her. She's run some nice races, beaten three lengths by Vasilika in the Gamely uh, earlier this year over good going. And again, it's nice to know that she's got races over ground with some give in it. Because again, with the rain that we've had in Southern California all week, there's no guarantee this is going to be one of those rock hard, firm turf courses that many of these horses are used to. So streak of luck, she's run well over good turf in the past. Maybe that will help her. 92 buyer, two back in the Goldacova works. She's sort of an in-and-outer from a form standpoint. Curlin's journey, I think, is another one. Coming into this race the right way for Dallas Keen. Let's watch the red carpet handicap. They ran her a mile and three-eighths last time out. She is in the green silks. She's in behind horses. She's going to try to split horses. There's not a lot of room. It's a very tight spot. She's going to get through. Where is she going to go? Well, she can't go inside. That's where Vibrance is going. And now she's going to try to get to the outside. And it's just a little bit too late. But we can see she's full of run once she does get clear I think this is a really good race for Curlin's journey. It was a winner, three starts back, going a mile. Only got beat a neck at 40 to 1 in the Catherine Crosby, two back. She's seeing dead red. Is she fast enough to win this race? She's never run a buyer speed figure higher than 87, but she's a filly that likes to linger near the back of the pack. And again, if you believe the time from U.S. pace projector, I don't believe it because I think Murth's making the lead. I do believe they'll be going a good clip. And if the pace is fast, she'll come running. And it could work against our next horse, Harmless who just beat three of these last time out in that optional claiming race for Bob Hess. She broke quick that day. She set the pace inside. But as they turn into the stretch, we're going to watch that race right now for Harmless. They went 48-2. and two. She's on the lead. There's 3-5 to five excellent Sunset who sat the pocket and came out with a chance. I think you're supposed to take, don't, you, don't uh, blame Judy out of this race. She's the four horse on the outside trying to rally into these tepid fractions, and she's given it her all, and she's going to fall, what, a head shy at the end? Harmless ran really well. She was game. Was she game or was an excellent sunset up to her old tricks and maybe hanging a bit? Harmless is expected to make the lead on the pace projector. She has run some fast races at slightly shorter distances. She comes into this race with a bullet workout. If she goes, I guess Mike Smith has to make a decision. I guess he has an advantage being outside of Harmless. If Harmless catches a flyer like she did out of the gate last time out, maybe Smith does rate with Mirth and maybe that hurts Mirth's chances. I think Mirth's going to try to go to the lead as she did in the Rodeo Drive, two starts back. Sort of the coming out party for Mirth. We're going to watch that race right now. She was able to get to the lead, and these are good horses she beat. She just threw down the gauntlet, going a mile and a quarter, 47-2, and two, 111, Bo Recall, Elysia's World. These are very good horses. They can't get to Mirth, who was able to get loose. They ran her in the Breeders' Cup, Philly and Mare Turf off of this race, and Mike did the exact same thing, only had to go a little faster. He opened up a big lead, she had the lead till about the top of the stretch, and then she's just not going to go with a world-class competition. Horses like Iridessa and Sister Charlie and Vasilika. No, th- no uh, disgrace in how she ran in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Question marks? Yes. Uh, do you want to take too short a price on her in this race? Probably not. I think two to one is fair, considering what we've seen from a buyer speed figure standpoint and the fact that she's just grown up in her last few races. But maybe the distance is short, maybe the pace is fast. I still think she's the best horse in the race. Miss Pentour is expected to show speed as well. I, I, I don't know if she can go with Harmless or Mirth early, and I think she's just going to take up a spot behind those two. She's another going second off the layoff. No excuses last time out other than the layoff. She was pressing Harmless in that race. She just couldn't go with those horses. Didn't, don't blame Judy. Just run a better race than she did coming from way out of it. Miss Pantour is a useful horse. She ran third in the honeymoon over course and distance back in June 2018. But I think she's kind of hit a snag from a buyer speed figure standpoint, just a little bit slow. Take a look at my top selections in this race. I pick Mirth. I think she's just better than these horses. I think Mike Smith's going to go to the front. I don't think Harmless wants to get involved in a suicidal duel with Mirth. I think maybe they'll say a mile and an eighth is a little short for her. Maybe she won't be able to make the lead. Maybe she's not that fast. Excellent sunsets in this race. Keep an eye out if you're looking for a bomb for Curlin's journey. I picked Curlin's journey fourth. You saw the little trouble she had in the red carpet handicap. She is coming into this race in really good form, and a mile and an eighth is not an issue for her. And if you believe that this pace could come apart, Curlin's journey might be sort of the price source. But I think Mirth is the most likely winner in this race, and she's my top pick in the grade three Robert J. Frankel with an approximate post time of 2.30 Pacific. Good luck.